Mandarin immersion means the kids not only learning the language, but they're also learning some of the subject all in Mandarin. So Mandarin is not just a language we're teaching, it's also a language we use to teach other subjects. For example, math and science will be all te taught in Mandarin. I think uh, it's really good for kids to start to learn another language early. There's a lot of research um, said, you know, it's so good for the brain development if a kid to learn another language at an early age. And I can see in my program, um, I'm so proud of my student because when they talk to me, I can feel like they're talking in an authentic voice. Um, their accent's really good sounds like they're native speakers. Um, so when you learn a language later on, you might have some accent and people um, can tell, you know, you're trying to learn that language at a later day. So when you learn a language early, um, you speak very authentic, your accent's really good. Um, and then um, the kids really into the cultural part too. So not only they're learning language, they're more aware of Oh, different country, different people, they might do things differently, think differently. I don't think we put a lot of weight on the parents, especially on homework, because we know majority of our student body is actually not from Chinese-speaking family. So the teacher's homework, either there's no, no homework at home, or it might be very uh, minimal, like a copy of characters for how many times, that type of homework. Um, we do ask parents to help with some mass vocabulary in English, because if everything is taught in Chinese, the kids might not familiar with some of the math vocabulary. So for like a standardized test, when they still have to answer questions in English, they might need some English support actually. Um, and then for the Chinese part, we do ask parents to help prepare their kids at home by tell them listen with their eyes and then follow teacher's direction, uh, always watch teacher and kind of try to guess uh, what the teacher is trying to tell you. Um, so one trick I always teach my kindergarten family is that play the game that guess what I'm saying by showing pictures and body language so their kids can start to get into the thinking of, okay, I might not understand the language, but I can guess what she's saying and I can try to figure out. So once they trying to make the connection between the sound and uh, the clue they found in the meaning, so they will start to understand some of the language and they eventually will start to make connection of, um, and they eventually they will start to try to say the sound out too, once they know what's that mean. The half of the day, my students will uh, learn math, science, and Chinese in my classroom. About midday-ish, we, we, uh, we'll switch class, and then they will go to my partner and teacher's classroom, and they will learn English and social study in the other classroom. It's hard. I mean, most concern I heard from not, not every parent. Some parents might say, oh, it is hard. My kids are still not understanding the language in, you know, two years or one year in the program or two years in the program. Um, that's when I really emphasize, that, again, that you really need to tell your kids they have to listen with their eyes because some kids are really smart. They learn things really instantly. Um, so when they learn English, they didn't have to pay much attention to the teacher. They can doodling while they're just half paying attention. But if you're in the Mandarin program, you really have to try to listen with your eyes.